My name is Miguel Delgado and I'm a board certified plastic surgeon and today we're going to talk about the facelift procedure, particularly for women. I'd like to go over the pre and post operative period, who is a candidate, when is a good time to have a facelift procedure, and what elements go into a full facelift. As I said, this segment is basically for women because men and women techniques for facelifting are quite different. A facelift procedure is composed of a brow lift, an upper and lower eyelid lift, and a face and neck lift. Those are the key components to a facelift. Now oftentimes we add other components to our facelifting such as fat injections because aging also involves volume loss, a combination of gravity and volume loss. So to achieve a more youthful appearance, just pulling the skin is only one component. It needs to be full. It needs to be highlighted. And therefore, fat injections have become a very key component of the rejuvenation process. Other things that we often do are things like chemical peels, um, enhancement of lips, all these smaller things add to the overall appearance of a nice, natural, elegant facelift. But the primary component is brow lift, upper and lower eyelids, lower face, and a neck lift. That's going to get you to third base or more and look fantastic. That should take off eight to 10 years by that alone. In this particular patient, she's about a 52-year-old lady, and you can see she has gravitational changes. Her brows are lower, her eyes are heavy, her face is migrating downward, and the neck is looking heavy. So to rejuvenate her, one has to do the complete facelift procedure, and she's had brow lift, eyes, lower facelift, and a neck lift as well. And you can see in this picture, she looks natural before surgery and she looks natural after surgery as well because all the components of her face are put into the age appropriate sequence for her, her face. You can see this on oblique view. You can see how her neck is nice and tight and youthful. So, one may ask, when's a good time to have a facelift? That's one of the most common questions that I'm asked. It's when you feel that you want to change in your appearance. There isn't really an ideal time or a perfect time. It's a time when you feel that when you look at yourself, you look tired and you want to rejuvenate yourself. Some of the most common things that I see patients coming in for is they want to look better at work. They're competing against younger people at work. So they want to enhance their appearance, stay into the workforce and competitive longer. Or someone may be going through a divorce. They're getting back out there in the dating scene. They want to put their best forward and they have a facelift. Very common. Or the person who just wants to look better. They feel good. They exercise. Their body looks great. But their face doesn't look like the rest of their body or how they feel. They just want to be able to look in the mirror and feel good about themselves. Very common reason. Uh, that they feel great inside, they have such youth and vitality, but when they look at themselves in the mirror, they don't see that. They see their mother. That's a common thing I, I hear. Uh, and they don't want to see their mother yet. So the facelift is a technique to rejuvenate them and give them back 
what they've lost over the past 10 years or so. And this facelifting procedure is quite effective in achieving that goal. The process of finding a plastic surgeon is one of the most critical decisions that you have to make. Who is the right person for me? Research, research, and research. Look on the internet, ask friends, and by all means look at a lot of before and after pictures because every plastic surgeon is an artist in their own right and they look at things differently. Their image of beauty may be very different. So you want to find a surgeon that has the vision for you that is similar to your own. I personally like people that have a natural look, not the Hollywood look, not the stark look, not the overly high arched brow look. I like a very natural, elegant, appearing person. The process after you've found your plastic surgeon is you come in and we go over pre-operative evaluation. During that e evaluation, we take pictures of you, we have diagrams in which we draw specifically what we're going to do at the time of surgery. These diagrams and pictures are taken into the operating room and are used as guidelines as to our plan precise operative plan that we've already discussed in detail often with the use of computer imaging and what you're wanting to accomplish. Once this is done and preoperatively you're all set, your surgery is, is done, one of, the, one of the most important things after surgery is elevation of your head to reduce the amount of swelling. Many people find a lot of problems with going through this and it's important that we make you comfortable going through this process. So icing your face down, back elevation is critically important. After about three days you come in, the dressings are taken off, drains if they're placed, they're taken out, you're cleaned up and you start at least seeing something that looks like yourself usually at that point. Usually early on it can be quite um, uncomfortable for a patient and family seeing their loved ones uh, being distorted and swollen, but this is all the normal process. Usually it takes about two weeks before you're comfortable going out, driving a car. You can usually go to work in two or three weeks. You can usually work out in about six weeks. It takes you probably three or four months to really settle in to your facelift so you, you forget you had it done, you're just going on with your life, there's no more pains and, and, um, and soreness, your incisions are well healed, you're not trying to cover them up as much. And usually by that time, you've really settled in into your new look, as well as people, family and friends have settled into your new look as well. One technique I use often, and I've used for over 20 years now, is computer imaging. Computer imaging is a great technological advance so that one can show a patient how they could possibly look after surgery. Now this isn't something that is guaranteed, but is to give you a visual image of, is this something that I would like? Would I feel good about this change? Sometimes I've even had patients said, you know, I really don't like that. Maybe I don't want a pacelift, or maybe I don't want my nose done. This is important to know before surgery, because after surgery obviously is too late. So most of my facelift patients, I sit down with them in their consultation and put them on a screen and we evaluate their appearance. What's aged? What's not? What looks great? What are your features such as you've got great bone structure, you have great lips, you have great chin, you have a long neck, you have nice hair. All these things 
are important to point out too, your positives and what we want to improve. We try to talk about and bring it all into a new image. This is an example of this patient here. And these are her pre-op pictures. And what I want to show here is how I would change her neck. And now I can actually, you can see how this can change. Okay, up, down, around. And I can, I've done this so long that I know what I can do surgically and what I can't do. So I'll work with her neck. As you see how I'm pulling things in. And I'm creating a better jawline. And then I'm going to blend things in. In this fashion. And if you look at her after pictures, this is her true after pictures. You see her after pictures is even better than her preoperative period. The computer is to help visualize. It doesn't give you an exact picture, but it gives you a stimulation of how you would look postoperatively. I like to bring up a point that has become very prominent in the cosmetic plastic surgery field, and that is volume replacement. As you age, you lose volume. Losing volume makes you look aged. Replacing volume makes you look younger. This is in an example of a patient that had a full facelift, which, as I said, is a brow lift, eyelid lifts and lower face and neck lift. She has also had fat injections to her cheeks and her lips. As you can see from the area around the lower face or the mid face area, how flat and sunken it looks. And that gives her an aged, older, tired appearance. And you can notice from the facelift and the fat injections how much her face has changed to a more youthful appearance that cannot be replaced by just pulling skin. Just pulling the skin just flattens things out more. We need to create volume, create curvatures, and create a more youthful look as she looked 10, 15, 20 years ago. So as you see here, her appearance has changed completely from sad, tired, to happy, youthful. And this is just from the facelift and the volume replacement. One of the most common questions I'm asked is, how long does a facelift last? It's different for every person, but I usually tell people eight to 10 years, and I wanna show you an example. Here's a patient that I saw. She had a facelift, brow lift, eyelid lift, lip augmentation, and she also had CO2 lasering. This is her after surgery about six months. And this is the same patient 10 years later. Now, to me, the picture 10 years later looks much younger than she was when she was 10 years earlier. So this is a good example of how someone has aged over 10 years and how that look maintains itself. You always look younger. So if you're 60, you look 50. If you're 70, you look 60. We shared a lot of, uh, I think, important information regarding the facelift procedure, uh, how to pick a board-certified plastic surgeon, and the process in which you go through, and what some of the uh, uh, aspects that plastic surgeons look for in patients and what you're looking for in your plastic surgeon as well. 
Um, please, by all means, give our office a call. We also have what's called virtual consultation. You can go to my website, send us pictures, and we will actually call you and go through a consultation on the telephone. We can even share before and after computer imaging without even coming into the office. So this highly technical world that we live in can make it much easier to gain information. We can even Skype patients as well. So we have a lot of great technological advances that we use every day. Thank you. Thank you.